Beware, citizen. You are now departing from the world of allowable opinion. The Tom Woods Show. Welcome, everybody. It's Tuesday, April 29th, 2014. We're talking to Jordan Page today, who really is, in some ways, the voice, the vocalist of the Ron Paul Revolution. Those of you who have been to Ron Paul events or Big Liberty events have likely run into Jordan and heard his music. But I know from talking to some listeners of this program that not everyone has. So today's your lucky day. It's a very interesting story about how Jordan got going in this and how it is that an independent musician with a niche like this can succeed. All right, let's turn now to Jordan Page. You can follow him at jordanpagemusic.com. Jordan, welcome to the program. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for having me on. You really have a unique position in the Ron Paul movement, the Ron Paul revolution. Uh, you know, there are plenty of musicians out there who like Ron Paul, but we associate you with Ron Paul. You remember, remember when the Washington Post did that profile of Ron Paul supporters likes, and for music, they like Jordan Page. Do you remember that? I do remember that, yeah. It was, uh, I think it was January of uh, 2012, and uh, some article came out with, with the, at, at the Washington Post, and I guess they had done some data mining, and, um, and the, uh, it, it seems like I, I, I was one of the more popular artists among Ron Paul supporters, which was very, very flattering to me. You know, I... Uh, I've been opening for Ron quite a bit in the last few years. I did, um, I think I've done about 18 shows with him. And uh, I say shows, really, you know, 18 openers for him speaking, you know. Yeah, right. Um, and uh, I've, I've been all over the country with him, and and uh, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been quite a journey. You know, I, I started out in, in 2008. Uh, well, I, I really woke up to, to, to the, the political realities that we face at the end of 2006, when I I wrote a song called Pendulum, and Pendulum was a song that came to me in the middle of the night, and I really didn't understand what it was about at the time. Uh, I finally got the courage to play it because it was over my head, and um, I, I had a quite a, a huge positive reaction from the audience that I played it for. I had a standing ovation for like 400 people, and, uh, and so I realized that you know I'd been given a, a message that I needed to share with the world. And before, before I could do that, I had to learn what that message was. And ultimately, it was the Liberty message. It, and, and I didn't discover Ron Paul until, God, till the end of 2007, a year later. And I, I was so excited to see that there was actually a politician who was, you know, a, a, a person of great moral character and who actually told the truth. I mean, that blew my mind. And uh, because I, I, I became very aware of the corruption and and just the you know the, the stereotypical cliches of just rotten lying, thieving, murdering politicians, but to, but to see that there was this man who'd been in Congress for you know twelve terms and 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 had stood stuck stu- stu- his guns and was for the Constitution and for the people and I was just amazed by it, and so, somehow um, I ended up at the at the Revolution March in uh, in Washington D.C. in July of '08, which was uh, oh, Ron. Yeah. Yeah, very I was last there. event. It was yeah. the very last one, and that was my very first one, my first Liberty event. And you know, I was it was the first day of time that I met him, the first time that I shared the stage with him. And then uh, I I picked up the torch, whether he knew he gave it to me or not. <laughs> um, I picked up the torch in my own in my own life, and and I I carried on, and I started doing more and more shows and, and writing more and more songs that were politically conscious and, lib- and had that liberty you know, mindset to them. And very an- a lot of anti-war stuff, you know, from, I don't know, any, any, anything from the Federal Reserve to chemtrails, you name it. So I, uh, I really, you know, went all out and dedicated, you know, myself completely to this cause, this, the cause of liberty. And in, and in the course of that, the Ron Paul campaign became very aware of me, and they started booking me to open for him, and uh, it, it turned out to be this great relationship, and uh, I, I, I love Ron. I love his wife, Carol, and their family. They've all been very, very kind to me and very generous to me and my family, and we've been down. I, I saw you down there in Texas uh, last last year and at, at his house in Texas for, for an event down there. I mean, it's just been... Uh, it's been a wild ride, and, and I'm just uh, you know very, very blessed to have made so many fans and made, made so many friends, uh, and, and all through 
the my association with Ron. It's been pretty crazy. You know, I, in my own way, opened for Ron on uh, numerous occasions at different events. I would be sort of the warm-up speaker. Mm -hmm. And these events are fantastic because you're speaking to a huge crowd, and they're all well-wishers. They may not know who you are, but if you're part of this, they love you. And, and, (laughs) and, And then it's funny how over time you don't realize how people through the Internet or through word of mouth, have come to know who you are, and then you go to one of Ron's events, and you get up there, and they're cheering you. They already know you. It's, it's an amazing thing. Now, let me ask you, though, before I forget, how long have you been making music? Uh, I started playing music when I was 12. I would say that I've been you know, making music since I was 6. I, I, when, I, when I was a little guy, I had this, um, this old Fisher-Price record player. You know, remember the ones with the big orange turntable on oh, it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had one of those, and... You know, I, I was I was obsessed with music when I was a kid. My mom was a Beatle maniac in the '60s, and she had hundreds, literally hundreds and hundreds of these old 45s of every group you could imagine: the Mamas and the Papas, Johnny Mathis, the Doors, Beatles, Rolling Stones. And I used to listen to that. I used to have my little Fisher Price record player. I thought I was big. I thought it was a big deal, you know. And I'm sitting in my room, uh, just you know, listening to music. Uh, I got a hold of a box set of um, of Bob Dylan's greatest hits, and, and and his music really spoke to me as a little guy. Even though I didn't understand what he was saying, it it, it really really spoke to me somehow, <laughs> resonated. And I, w- I would write my own little songs and got really into poetry. And then I, I got into the Doors when I was about eleven years old. Uh, Jim Morrison and the Doors, and their music completely sent me on a uh, uh, on a journey and. And I, I, all I wanted to do was play music after that. And so I, I worked all summer when I was 12 to, to buy a guitar. And, and it, was, it was ironic that the day after I bought my guitar, we, we moved out of New England down to Maryland, uh, which was a very difficult transition for me. And the music was what helped me get through that experience. And I, I, I would play you know, five hours a day, even though I was awful. <laughs> <laughs> I would just play and play and play. And so it's been, you know, 22 years since then so that I've been playing. So I've been playing since I was a little guy. It's, it's been kind of the central driving force in my life. Now, people can find out more about you at jordanpagemusic.com, but for people who don't yet know about you, is all your music political? Does it always have a political message, or sometimes you just write a song because you want to write a song? Sure, it's both. But, you know, since 2008, the majority of the songs that I've written have have had you know, either a political or, or sociopolitical or um, or at least philosophical, um, conscientious sort of sort of bent to them. Um, my my first album, The Book of Life, I wrote that. I, I put that out, excuse me, in uh, 2005, and that was more. You know, it was a very personal album, chapters of my life, so to speak. And you know, there were some love songs for my wife on there, and there were some philosophical ramblings and and. It, it, I mean, it wasn't political in any way. It was certainly spiritual. I mean, I'm very much a Christian, and that comes out in my music. I wouldn't call it Christian music. It's just, you know, it's just rock and roll, you know, made by a Christian. And 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 you know, my 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 spirituality is a huge uh, manifestation of my uh, in in my music. So, I uh, my my earlier stuff wasn't political at all. Then I had my big awakening, and the things that I am the most passionate about writing about that that are are the you know the big heavy topics like war and you know and 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 corruption and tyranny and I, I feel like music for me has taken on a new life because it, 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 it's it's music that's not just for music's sake. You know, it, it, it's actually to accomplish the songs that I write actually have a have a goal that they're you know meant to accomplish, which is to you know penetrate the soul and and you know free a person from the bonds of ignorance and and mental slavery. I mean, like, that is the goal. It, 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 it's uplifting the way music should be, but it all, but the message of the music is what's the most important part. The, like the, the, the actual, the tones, the music itself is just the vehicle for the message to get through. Now, is there one particular song that, in terms of popularity, in terms of the entire catalog of songs you have, just vastly outstrips the others that was just a big hit with everybody? Yeah, I would say my song "Liberty" was was that song. Um, I've had uh, so we we've got you know well over a hundred thousand hits on that on YouTube, and that's that that's the song that that, um, that people have really you know universally loved. "Pendulum" was also another song like that, 
and uh, and that and that was the song that put me on the map. But Liberty took took it uh, you know many steps farther. You know that that was one of Ron's favorite songs of mine, and it's the most requested song I have. Uh, you know, people have teared up when I sang that song for them. I, I've actually had a lot of folks over the years, over the last couple of years, anyway, come up to me and tell me that that was a song that woke them up, or that was a song that woke up their spouse. Or, you know, I actually had a, I had a soldier come up to me in Nashville. I played a show in Nashville, I guess, two years ago. And he comes up to me in his full full army army fatigues with the, uh, with the uh, organizer of the event. And she says to me, you know, this soldier has come all the way here. He's come a long way to meet you. And he said he, he said he just wanted to come here to meet you, and I said, oh, okay, what's, what's this all about? And he, he shakes my hand, and he says, I just want you to know that I was stationed in Afghanistan, and we were out in the desert for a long time, and we, every now and again we would have a few hours of, of satellite Internet, and I was surfing YouTube, and I found your Liberty music video, and I watched it nine times, and that's what made me decide to get out of the military. Wow. So, fighting in, this, in these illegal wars. And I was like, oh, my God, that's oh. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that is, that's a beautiful thing. That's, and I, you know what? I get emails sometimes from military people saying they read my stuff or they watched a video or whatever, and it really it blows me away that a total stranger, you know, I didn't even know this was going on, had his life totally changed in that way. This is one of the incredible blessings of the internet age that total strangers can be having these experiences and and maybe you and i might not even know about half of them uh you know if if that what a what a great story that is now one thing i like about you and that i i admire about you is that somehow despite all the you know the 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 infighting that that may go on within what we call our movement and parenthetically i'll note that on facebook the other day i pointed out that i object to the claim that libertarians, let's say, are unique in this regard. Uh, Republicans fight among themselves. Democrats right. fight among themselves. Everybody, there's nothing unusual about that. But we have different cliques and different things in the movement, and yet somehow you've stayed totally above the fray. Like, you're liked by everybody. There's nobody who says, oh, get that bum Jordan Page out of here. Nobody says that. How did you do that? Yeah, there, there's, there's a few who, who are not fans of mine. Um, of, of me personally, but um, because of my politics. But my my thing has always been making peace, Tom. I've always believed in in making peace and not you know antagonizing folks that I uh, that I would hope to be my brothers in arms. Essentially, you know, I mean, if, if I disagree with someone, you know, I, I I don't I don't focus on that. I focus on what we agree on. Because if I ever hope to change their heart or mind about something, then then. So much of what we, of what we, the, the, of new information that comes into our lives, you know, hinges on what we think about the person who's telling us. You know, if, if we don't uh, respect or trust someone, why are we going to listen to them? And, uh, you know, I, I'm just, I've just never been one for a lot of drama. I mean, I, 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 people, can, people can focus on the things they want to focus on. If it's, if it's counterproductive, I'm just not going to be a part of it. You know, I, I, for, for me, like, I, I really learned something from Ron, which was stay on message. You know, stay on it. I mean, I'm not. I'm not I don't want to. I'm not trying to get sucked into the minutia that people bicker about. For for me, it's it, it's the simplest thing in the world. I don't care how pure of a libertarian you are. I don't care how pure of an anarchist you are. I don't care. That's your prerogative. You know, all I care about is is the core hard truth. What am I trying to accomplish? I'm just trying to wake people up because until you change the culture, nothing matters. Politics, to me, in my view, politics doesn't matter. The, the political process doesn't matter until you change the culture. Like the, the Bush administration was amazing at changing the culture to, in the wrong direction. Mm. You know, we need we need to change the culture to embrace liberty, and that is happening. And that's all that I care about. I would rather take on 350 million people in this country and and and, and try to change their hearts and minds through through music and through and through through art and, and through and through culture. Than trying to reform the cesspool of evil that is Washington D.C. You know, Jordan, you are a. We won't give away ages necessarily, but you are a younger man than I am, and yet you've had this important realization a lot sooner than I have. Now, anybody who reads my writing and you know watches me speak and so on knows that I haven't given an inch when it comes to principle, but in my approach, 
I think as I start to enter, I can't believe I'm saying this, middle age, I have <laughs> mellowed a little bit in, in some of my presentation, at least in terms of this program when I interview people. If there's somebody out there I really don't like, then I don't want to interview that person. So it's not like I'm going to have him on and then grill that person. That's just not who I feel like being right now. And sure. when I have people on who maybe agree with me 75% of the way, I know there are people in my audience who want me to badger and hector them about that 25%. And what I'd rather do is talk about that a little bit and try and be as, as civil as possible. Uh, but by and large, I do want to focus on what I can learn from people because I can learn exactly. from just about everybody, focus on what I have in common. And then when we do talk about areas of disagreement, I want it to be as respectful as possible to show that this sort of thing can be done, and you really have blazed an important trail on that. Now, here comes the key question of all, which is, how in this day and age, how does an independent musician support himself? Is that too personal of a question? No, it's fine. It's, it's an easy question to answer. I mean, it's, it's been, it, it has been a, a creative struggle to, to, find, to find a way to make it happen. I mean, for years, Tom, I lived in Annapolis, Maryland, with my with my wife, we had, we had a house there. And, you know, I the music scene there was great, and I was able to. You know, I was playing sixteen shows a month, and I was also teaching. I, I taught for about eight years. Um, uh, you know, twenty to twenty five students a week. So I was making a great living doing that. But I I had a realization. Number one, I had a realization that the area that we were in was uh, strategically a terrible place to be if the proverbial stuff ever hit the fan. Because we were on a peninsula, one way in, one way out, in between Baltimore and D.C. Terrible, terrible place to be. You have small children, and you're trying to escape. So I, I looked around at, at, at my area, and I said, we've got to get out of here. So we started looking at, at more rural areas in, in, in the Midwest. And I, 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 at the same time I had that realization, I had the realization I wasn't getting anywhere. You know, I was playing maybe one Liberty-type event a month. And the rest of these, you know, grueling bar gigs or, or club gigs that were, you know, just many of which were fairly soul crushing gigs, but they were, it was how I was supporting my family. And I realized that I, I had to, in order to, in order to achieve any sort of greatness, you have to take chances. You have to take risks and put your neck out. And so I, I, I prayed about it quite a lot and I just, I asked for guidance. And ultimately I was led out to the Midwest. We have a great place out here with a lot of land, and it's exactly the kind of environment we were looking for for our family. And it forced me to turn the, the, the liberty activism through music into my full-time job. You know, I, I wasn't able to rely on my previous business, which was very lucrative, but wasn't, it wasn't taking my career anywhere. It was more of just a job. Right. But I wanted to take my career to the next stage where I was traveling all over the country all the time, not just once in a great while, and, and stinting off of that one great Liberty show where everyone knew me, and, and then going home to the, to the bar gigs where there's you know, 20 drunks with their backs to me watching television and eating pretzels. You know? right. So I had to make a decision to, to, to take that risk and really make myself work. And from there, I, I just started booking myself at, you know, all over the all over the country. I mean, I, I got in touch with it with all the political groups, all the liberty groups, Ron Paul meetup groups, and anybody that was having an event, you know, I would go and play their event. And I'm also I also sell music online, so I make money from that. And uh, and I do and I do a lot of shows. I also I also do have some some other side projects. I work in the investment world also, and that that brings in some some funds. But uh, but but ultimately, the music is my is my main passion. It's my main goal to uh to to further my career in that regard and i just have to hit the pavement you know i i, I hustle all the time and i'm always on the lookout for for new places to play and to spread the message in the last year since july um well, I, I actually like last may i looked at my summer calendar tom and there was nothing summer of, of 2013 there was nothing i had one show in august and that was it so i i said to myself there's got to be a way for me to make this work and I had the brilliant idea of doing small, intimate house concerts. And so what I, what I did was I started getting in touch with all the liberty groups that I knew all over the country and saying, hey, if I were to come down there, could you get at least 30 people to come together? And we'll, we'll do it by donations. And, uh, and I'll, I'll play a show. I'll play an intimate show in your living room. And they, people, were, people went nuts over this idea. They loved it. And so I did a tour in Texas, and it was just a huge success. And so I started booking tour after tour. I've done probably, 
18 tours since July of uh, like like in, in different geographic areas around the country um, for for all the different Ron Paul type Liberty groups, and I'm playing for anywhere from 20 to 100 people, and they they've all been you know huge successes. I mean, some more than others, but but all in all, I mean, I, I I'm I'm paying my bills, not going into debt. Most musicians go into debt touring. And, and, and but they do it in order to get the exposure. I'm getting the exposure and making money doing it, and it's all based on the kindness and donations of my Liberty brothers and sisters. So it's it's been a really a really cool uh, way to keep keep going where there hasn't been a lot going on. Now there's a lot more Liberty events going on in this season, and uh, I've got I've got so much coming up. So I, I just kind of I, I, I keep on keep on. I I, I make it work. Does your website, jordanpagemusic.com, have a list of your events, I would assume? It does, yeah. There, there's, a, there's a button on there that says Tour, and they, people can check out my, uh, my calendar from there. Uh, before I let you go, what's your most recent project, or what are you working on now? Well, right now I am working with the, with the folks up in northwest, uh, northwestern uh, United States so they're, they're with the Jefferson Republic. Uh, they've, they've kind of adopted me as their as their mascot, I guess, or their voice. And they're, they're trying to uh, take the, the, the Siskiyou County, which is one of the northernmost uh, counties in California, and, and have it effectively secede from the corporate entity known as the United States and, and become its own sovereign uh, republic, and, which is a really exciting prospect. They actually have a, a ballot initiative on June the 3rd that they, uh, where, where they, could, they could actually do this. And it's, it's a very exciting uh, little project that I'm part of, and it's, it's, it, 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 there's a lot of implications there. Um, I am working on a new album. I, I've been writing for the last year and a half, and, and I've got an incredible amount of songs. I'm still trying to put the budget together to get that recorded. Um, I've got, uh, let's see, what, what big events do I have coming up? I'm going to be, oh, I've got a lot of shows with Panda, uh, People Against the NDAA. I'm ah. going to be uh, performing a show for them in Atlanta on May 25th, uh, in, in Albany, New York on June 7th. Uh, I believe Sacramento on uh, on August the second. You have to look at my website, but I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff with the people against NDAA. It's a it's a cause I'm very very passionate about. Um, and those who don't know what the NDAA is, who actually everybody who listens to your show probably knows what the uh, NDAA yeah, is. Yeah, I would be but, shocked. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a legis- it's legislation that was passed in 2012 as part of the National Defense Authorization Act that allowed for the indefinite detention of American citizens if, uh, for, you know, under suspicion of wrongdoing. And, and, and there is no clear definition of what that even means. So they basically gave themselves carte blanche to just black bag anyone they want indefinitely. So, I mean, that law was written for me, was written for you. I mean, we need to educate people about this. So Panda is, a, is an organization I'm very passionate about. And um, I'm, I'm supporting a number of candidates. And I just got, I've got a lot going on. And we're, we're about to have a have a baby here soon, and we just got a lot a lot going on in the world of Jordan Page, that's for sure. Well, I know what you mean in the baby department, <laughs> that's for sure. I know you do, man. Yeah. We're neck and neck. <laughs> yeah, we are neck and neck. Right, right, right. But I think we're probably going to be holding steady for a while, so we'll see which one of us winds up uh, inching ahead of the other one. But I hope people check out uh, jordanpagemusic.com. I've really enjoyed having a chance to get to know you over the years, and I know that our paths are going to cross again at some point. I don't know when or where, but it seems like an absolute inevitable ability and I appreciate you taking some time to talk a little bit about the behind the scenes and how Jordan Page became Jordan Page and what you're up to today it's very exciting and interesting thanks for being here well I really appreciate you having me on Tom thank you so much all right everybody remember you guys are helping me pay the bills here and also help me helping me promote the program at no cost to yourselves every time you enter Amazon through the Amazon widget at TomWoodsRadio.com. So when you're about to make that Amazon purchase, just say to yourself, now, isn't there some guy I'm supposed to help him out because he's giving me this show that I like and whatever? Just head over to TomWoodsRadio.com. There's a little Amazon entry point there, and at no cost to you, you help us pay the bills and get the word out about this program. Of course, linking to the program site, linking to TomWoodsRadio.com on Facebook or Twitter or on your blog is also very much welcome. All right, thanks for listening. We'll see you tomorrow. The Tom Woods Show.